This is a quick video about some comments that I've received recently asking me what TypeScript VS Code extensions I use because some people have seen them and have wondered what they are. I'm going to go through two of them. One of them is very useful if you're advanced into TypeScript and you want to see types update on the page. And the second one is honestly shocking that it's not in VS Code as it is because it's so useful for everyone. Anyone using TypeScript should use this plugin, especially if you're a learner and you want to read your error messages in a nicer way. Let's jump into it. So the first one is the one that I mentioned that if you're using more advanced types, you may want to use this. But again, you can use this if you're even doing basic types. But essentially what it is, is if we're working on some types like this, so say we have person here with a name, string and an ID number. Say we were to come in here later and change this to string. When we go down our page on fetch data, we'd see person ID, we'd have to hover and see that that's a string. Same with age. If we go down here, we'll see that age is actually defined as a string down here. So what if we change that to a number instead and just fix this error quickly? Again, when you're making these changes, what you have to do to see into different things like this is hover over it. But what you can do is use a plugin called two slash and then query, two slash query comments. Now, if we click install on that, and what we do is we go back to our type here. What we can do is underneath where we want to see these changes, we can come in and we can do slash slash. And then you want to point at what you're using with the up arrow thing. And then here we get const age number and it shows it like that. Obviously, this is just a comment and you'd go in. This is essentially when you're developing, you wouldn't really leave these in. But when you just sort of are working on your types, you can leave a comment like this and you can see it update and change as you go through the program. So if I copy and paste this again and do that on the line above, what you'll see is we'll also get person with data here. But what I'm going to do again, it ba it's based on where it's pointing. So if I move it all the way up to that person dot ID, you'll see it there update with a string. So that's what I was showing earlier. If we were changing our type up here, we wouldn't have to go and hover over it to see what's changed down here. We can see it's changed nice and easily on the screen for us. So that's really useful. And it's also really useful if you're a content creator like me and you want to update people on what your types are without having to go and hover them. So it's nice and clear for you guys watching. The second one I want to show you is if we have something like this, so there's some more advanced TypeScript going on here. We have an interface with a person. We have a person going on here. We have a get user function type. And we've got an error here because at the moment, this isn't matching the type that we've asked for in the get user function. You'll see that we've got the issue with person and some various other properties. Now, when we hover over this, what are we reading here? We're reading property users missing in the type person person, but required in the type user email string at string dot string age. And it's just, it's a bit too much, especially if you're just learning TypeScript or even just learning development to start with. So the second one, and it's probably one of the most popular extensions at the moment is pretty TS errors. So if we go into pretty TypeScript errors, we install that. When we go back into our TypeScript here, what you'll see is we're still going to get that error up here. But if we scroll down, it's laid out in a way better format for us to read. So we can see property user is missing in type, person username string, but it's required by that type. So this error is literally just saying the property user is missing from here when it's supposed to be up here. So we can go ahead and fix that easily now. And then we'll notice another error here. Again, this is the error that TypeScript would spit out to you in VS Code normally. And you can just scroll down and you can see the error that we're actually getting in that pretty TypeScript error just nicely and formatted there for us. So here it's saying it can only specify known properties and username doesn't exist on this type because it, it doesn't. So again, we could go ahead and change that to name. And again, we'll get another error just showing you some of the examples. And this one is simply going to be that age is now missing because we have this type that we've given it, but age is supposed to be on it based on what's defined. That's just so much nicer than reading all of this. And it actually just makes your developer experience way quicker as well. So to fix that, we can therefore go ahead and put our age on that. So that's the two TypeScript extensions that I want to go through. But I want to show you a bonus thing, which was something that I've recently learned from Theo. I recommend checking out his video on it. But if I go ahead and open up this page here, it's TS Docs. Essentially, what it allows you to do is browse the TypeScript and type documentation for NPM packages via a website. And it's just nicer than the way you may have done it before in VS Code. So essentially, you type in the library you want. So in this case, I've gone to testing library React. Say so I want to get a type from there. Before, what you may have done is you may have imported the type and control clicked into it and gone to where it's defined and tried to work your way up a web if you're trying to find a specific type. 
But what this does is it just it documents it in a really nice, clean way. And this is all being generated from the package itself. It's the same guy who made Bundle Phobia, so he knows what he's doing. And it's just really cool to come in here. And obviously you can click into things and see lots of different things. And it's just a way nicer way of documenting the types than I've seen other people use. And obviously then the default way of control clicking in and trying to find something within their type, their exported type definitions. Thank you very much for watching. If you didn't know about any of these, please leave a comment in the description below if this has helped you. Thank you very much.